Welcome back, here we go again with the map man. I don't know if they actually call themselves that. They did once in one video, but we'll see. This is the second video I've been watching of them. So this video I'm, I will be reacting to, why does London have 32 boroughs? So I don't know why. This is why we're watching it. And it's gonna be interesting to see what is going on. I was there, I was in London, but I didn't really connect that there were so many different areas, I guess, of, of London broken up like that. So let's just jump in. Let's see. I'm curious. I see a map of New York right now. Let's see where they go with this. New York. New York City is divided into five iconic boroughs. Huh? Yeah. Paris Queens. is divided into 20 unimaginatively named arrondissements. And London, too, is divided into boroughs, 32 of them. But wait, 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 wait. Do I recognize any of these? Like, is this a common... That's crazy. I mean, London is absolutely massive, so maybe it makes sense, I don't know. 32 maybe. of them. But why 32? Why not four or 703? Why does London, or indeed any big city, need to split itself up into bits? Yeah. Why? Greater London is f***ing enormous. With See? a population about the same as an entire Switzerland, if it were run by just okay. one council, it would be gargantuanly huge compared to the next biggest one in England. A super council like this would be bureaucratic and inefficient, and there'd inevitably be whole neighbourhoods that get totally forgotten about. Another reason to divide London up is that it's not just big, it's diverse. From the touristy West End, mm -hmm. to the densely populated Victorian inner city, to the leafy 20th century suburbs, different parts of the capital have different needs. And what they spend their money on is a local decision that should be decided locally. These guys are That's why funny. the city is split into several subservient subsections. While London had been subdivided like this for centuries, it had never been subdivided very well. Before 1965, the area we now call Greater London was made up of 86 authorities, wow. based mostly on ancient church parishes, many dating back to the Middle Ages. There's lots Makes of evidence sense, of the pre-1965 authorities you can still see today. Walking around London, you may notice street signs that bear unfamiliar names, like Borough of St Pancras, Borough of Hampstead, Borough of Finsbury, Borough of Hoburn, Borough of Paddington. Some of these old names survive today as parliamentary constituencies, and they also turn up in some unexpected places, good times, such as good times, St. Marlborough Crematorium, which is nowhere near Marlborough, and St. Pancras Cemetery, which is nowhere near St. Pancras. These were named after the councils that built them and not their locations, which in those days were empty countryside. The presence of the ex boroughs can also be felt in some of the lovely town halls they left behind. Finsbury. Lots of these grade two listed buildings have been turned into things. Battersea Town Hall is now Battersea Art Centre. Hampstead Town Hall is now Wack Art Centre. Hornsey Town Hall is now Hornsey Town Hall Art Centre, etc, 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 etc. So what was wrong with these old boroughs and why were they gotten rid of? Under the old system, in this small area of North Woolwich, the primary school was run by the County Borough of East Ham, the emergency services by the County Borough of West Ham, the public baths and library by the Metropolitan Borough of Woolwich, and the secondary school by the London County Council, all within a five-minute walk of each other. The 86 authorities wow. varied massively in size and what powers they had. There were too many of them and it was a cluttery mess. And so, yeah, in the crazy. late 50s, it was decided to slim down from 86 to a more manageable number. Suddenly, every authority in London was in danger of disappearing. Except one. Yeah. Well, right in the middle of the map is the very small and very confusingly named City of London. This, this square London, mile on London. the site of Roman Londinium... This is kind of like the touristy area, right? This is like we're massively touristy area. I see, what is it, the HMS Belfast on the river, Tower of London on the right. What else do I recognize? has always done things differently like where from I was the London the that surrounds time. it. I know, to I this know. day, they I have their own separate back. police force, and separate taxes, and separate Lord Mayor. The corporation that runs the city of London is so old, nobody knows how old it is. The oldest document we can find is from around 12-something, with a little paragraph... We could talk for hours about what makes the city of London weird. Basically, due to its historical importance, the city was going to be left alone as it was, but the rest of London was getting a complete overhaul. This is the first cool. attempt at a new map, drawn up in That's 1957 good. by the inventor of Greater London, Sir Edwin Herbert, with 52 new boroughs. So why wasn't it used? When this map was shown to the man who had to approve the new boroughs, Minister for Housing and Local Government, Keith St. John Joseph, he didn't like it for two reasons. I don't like it for two reasons. One, these suburban fringes aren't going to be part of London after all, and B, these boroughs are still too small. A proper borough should function like a city wow. in its own right. 
It should have a natural centre for shops and services, wow, wow. good unbroken lines of communication like roads and rail, and a population no smaller than 200,000. A tried and tested size for an efficient council. Quite the map. And so began the task of creating the new, bigger, more powerful boroughs, each one more equal than the last. This would be achieved by merging the old 86 authorities together in new combinations. Some neighbours were happy to dutifully partner up. But some authorities, actually most of them, were not feeling cooperative, making the puzzle much trickier to solve. Bitter long-term rivals course, East Ham always. and West Ham were furious about being made to merge. Hornsey was begging for an up-down alliance with lovely Southgate rather than a side-to-side -side one with smelly Tottenham. Woolwich was refusing to give up its weird little enclaves north of the River Thames, a map anomaly dating back to William the Conqueror. The but this was precisely the sort of silliness getting rid of this entire exercise was the point of. Mm -hmm. Wandsworth argued that it already met the criteria to carry on as a borough on its own. And it did, but what would then have happened to Little Battersea? It couldn't join the surrounding Wandsworth or the new combined borough would be too big. The only solution was to slice the old Wandsworth in two. <laughs> Fights like this were happening in every corner of the capital. But arguably, Keith's most controversial combination was here in northwest London. Wembley was a mostly homeowning, mostly Tory voting, leafy suburb. Willesden was a mostly renting, mostly Labour voting urban neighbourhood. As well as being nothing alike, the two sides were isolated from each other. There were only two small roads connecting them. Hmm. Keith was inundated with angry letters from both sides opposing the merger. But since all the surrounding boroughs had been solved really nicely, and he was in no mood to start all over again, the improbable and impractical shotgun marriage between Wembley and Wilsdon had to go ahead. There was no way to give all 86 authorities what they wanted, but of the thousands of potential solutions, Keith calculated that the pattern to make the fewest people unhappy was this one. The oh, answer to go. the question, how many boroughs should Greater London have, was 32. That's In the end, Keith did rather down. a neat job, but the fighting was far from finished. The 32 new boroughs now needed names. Great. Rather than cause oh, any no. more arguments, Keith let the new boroughs come up with their own suggestions for what they should be called. But they came back with some really stupid names, like Osselton Gore, Sorensen Spread, Chiggle Wanwood, 32, Chiggle. and three of them wanted to be called Riverside, including one not on the river. If they of want course. to be trusted to come up with their own names, they have to stick to these rules. A, give clear indication of location. It's got to be somewhere people have heard of. Lovely Two, place. no silly made up words. And most important of all, four, absolutely no double barreled or unwieldy long names. <laughs> Under these new rules, most boroughs chose one of their existing names. In most cases, it was obvious which one was most That's deserving, good. especially Harrow. Usually, the honour went to the borough with the biggest population. But sometimes it went instead to the borough considered to be the most historically significant. And yes, this did cause massive arguments. I it was bet. bad enough being conquered by your neighbour, but imagine having to take their name as well. That's like telling the people of Scotland you're called England now, except nowhere near as big a deal. If councils yeah, couldn't agree on an existing name, they either had to come up with a neutral compromise or have a neutral compromise imposed upon them. East Ham and West Ham put it to local residents to pick a new name, which predictably resulted in the suggestions Hamstrung, Ham Sandwich, and Ham Sweet Ham. ham sweet the councils ham. ignored these and became New Ham or Newham. Newham. The rest of the new solutions, however, were nowhere near as inspired and nearly all broke Rule A. Before 1965, hardly anyone was familiar with the ancient names of Havering, Tower Hamlets, or Hillingdon, which was only chosen because the grandfather of one of the civil servants was a rector of the tiny parish with that name. More lowlights include Redbridge, named after a red bridge demolished in 1921 that no one remembers, the yeah. dully monosyllabic Brent, a poor choice given that a Brent tube station already existed and wasn't in Brent. The two. And in my opinion, the worst one, Harringay, named after a small neighbourhood at the southern tip of the borough, but with one of the R's removed and one of the A's turned into an E. The two spellings have been confusing Londoners ever since. The 32 names had nearly all been agreed when Keith received a letter from the influential and very important Captain John Litchfield, Member of Parliament for Chelsea. The letter said, You better not forget the name Chelsea when you name our new borough, or I'm going to come round here and I'm going to feel, or I'm going to wash this in the foolish way. But I already promised the Royal Borough of Kensington they could keep their name, he said. What could he do? Crazy. To save his own skin, he let... This is wild because I've never heard of anything like this. The borough's reforming them for what 80 something to 32 was it so that's pretty crazy it seems like a really big event 
for all these things happening. I mean, of course, I wasn't alive then and um, happened what in the 50s. Yeah, it's pretty wild that I, I just never heard of this before. And maybe it's just been quite a while. So it just everything kind of just smoothed itself out by now. Both sides Hopefully, have their way, producing we'll see, the absurd maybe. dodecasyllabic the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Keith's own rules made it very clear that this sort of name wasn't allowed, and it was quite an insult to the much larger groups of people who'd campaigned hard for and Deptford and and Battersea. As usual, it was one rule for the very posh who get taken seriously when they complain, and another rule for everyone else. After decades of pressure, the ministry relaxed the ban on and in 1979 when Hammersmith gained an and Fulham, and in 1980 when Barking gained an and Dagenham. And that's Dagenham. how we got the 32 boroughs with the 32 names that we're still using today. Wow. But that's only half the story. How are the London boroughs run today? How is life different from one borough to the next? How can you tell when you've crossed a border from one to the other? Mm -hmm. And which borough has the best logo? Find out all of this and less in part two. Yeah, so that's pretty strange. I've never heard of anything like this. I guess, of course, I wouldn't really learn about it, but you'd think that I would have heard something about it. It seems like a pretty significant um, kind of event to happen in London. But I don't remember any of these, like anything, maybe something in the tube would be named somewhere along, along the lines of one of the boroughs that you're in. Yeah, I've never really come across any of these names, especially when I was there. Nothing really rings a bell here, but maybe I don't, uh, as a tourist, maybe it's just like very insignificant. So that's pretty interesting. And there's probably a, you know, there is a lot more to this. And I'm sure the fighting between these different boroughs uh, went on for, many years after this. Let me know if there's anything else you could add to this. Why does London have 32 boroughs? And it, they broke it down by a lot. Probably for the best, I'd assume. It just seems nicer. It just seems uh, cleaner and uh, hopefully it's easier to run these boroughs and better to move on. So it was a good choice. It was probably a big, big, hard choice. But then once they did it, they're kind of just like, yeah, they're good to go. They're 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 good. As always, let me know if you have any any additional information about this. I'm sure there's a lot of facts and interesting things about this. I'll uh, catch you all next time. So have a good rest of your day.